Kenyatta's Northlands Farm and the Odinga Family Business, East Africa Spectre Limited. We call out high-ranking government officials, starting with the principal assistant of Ruto, one Rigabi Gashagua, Kemani Ishu, <coughs> the National Assembly Majority Leader, and others who issued threats of yesterday's attacks, which were actualized in violent operations with the apparent connivance of the police. We say so because the Kenya police never showed up the entire day this was happening. Miraculously, they have showed up today, 24 hours later and after the damage. These acts are reminiscent of the Mugambe land invasions in Zimbabwe. A legitimate self-respecting government cannot use drugs to settle political disputes or to stop the exercise of the constitutional right to demonstrate. The world watched on TV and online as Kenyans marched, danced, sang, and cheered peacefully in the neighborhoods of Kawangware and Kibra yesterday. Our peaceful protest was met with acts of chaos designed by the government as we left Kibra. The day would have ended without much incident, but as we left Kibra along the Langata uh, bypass exit, they logged our convoy and the supporters who were escorting us out with tear gas and provoked acts of violence on peaceful demonstrators. This brutality did not end there as police and government hired goons further invaded the peaceful Kibra neighborhood under the cover of darkness, tormenting residents with crude weapons, bullets, and like a repeat history, they torched and burned the PCA church and the Karanja mosque in Kibra. The invasion of private land, slaughter and looting of animals, targeted attacks on private business, the burning of homes, and torching of places of worship have been at the heart of Ruto Ruto and Rigadi operations against progressive forces dating back to the dark days of one party era. We note the overwhelming silence of our international friends and the conspicuous absence of Ruto Ruto. Planning with of the dark Monday attacks, he must be held responsible for yesterday's destruction, mayhem, arrest, injuries, and loss of life. Uh, thank you very much, Martha. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. once said that in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the loud silence of our friends. As Mother has said, we hear the loud silence of our international friends, even in the midst of this May that we saw yesterday, and brutal police brutality that we have witnessed. I would like now to invite our leader to now make the main statement. Nikonja tasi ezi karanga, uwe hae shagala bagala, niko tayari kuli magala, sita si mama mawe ya kita wala, sita si mama mawe ya kita wala. Hello, Asante Nisana, you will be seated. 
This is now a follow-up to what Martha has already uh, stated. Ruto's hands are all over this violence. When Azimio Laumoja called for protests in line with Article 37 of our Constitution, we never envisaged that in desperation the state will respond by hiring goons and mercenaries to rain terror on peaceful and innocent Kenyans. We know no law that allows Mr. William Ruto and Mr. Rigadi Gachagua to order Kenyans to invade other people's lands and businesses in the name of quelling legitimate, peaceful, and constitutional protests. Despite as many supporters bending over to ensure that the protests are conducted strictly within the law, the state under the direction of Ruto and Gachagua, did everything to ensure the protests degenerate into chaos and lead to death. Yesterday, the state unleashed goons on farms way off Nairobi and business, businesses way off the CBD. In that invasion, Trees were uprooted and burned, and animals scattered away and slaughtered under the supervision of the state. Business premises were stoned and broken into, and properties scattered away. Worse still, lives were, lives were lost. People were hacked to death with crude weapons, while others got shot with guns. The last time we witnessed such invasion of farms and companies in this part of the world was when Robert Mugabe claimed to be compensating freedom fighters in Zimbabwe. Mugabe claimed to be compensating freedom, uh, sorry, it ended in the total collapse of Zimbabwe's economy. It will not be any different here. In this latest act of desperation by Mr. Ruto and Gachagua, we see a plot that will be extremely disastrous for the country's long-term stability and economy. We see the little hope for Kenya's large-scale farming. We are tearing the heart out of our commercial agriculture. We see little hope for new investments in our economy or expansion of existing ones. We are looking at the beginning of the end of the economy of this country. It is clear that the country is being run by people the hand of men who are goons at, at, at heart while pretending to be leaders and statesmen. How does Ruto go to Germany and talk about attracting German foreign investment to Kenya, knowing very well that back at home he has put in place a machinery for victims for vicious attack on local investments? In the age of climate change, how does Ruto sanction the setting of, of trees on fire and still hope to convince us that he's committed to mitigating climate change and ensuring green growth. Why would foreign leaders and businesses entertain such a conflicted personality? Let there be no confusion here. Violence has been Ruto stock in trade against Kenyans whenever Kenyans have sought to change their lot and what happened yesterday is not any different. The invasion of land, slaughter and scattering away of animals, attack on business premises, 
the burning of homes and touching places of worship has been at the heart of Ruto regarding operations against progressive dating back to the days of the clamor for multipartism to date. You find this kind of operation in Maela, Thessalia, and the rural farms as we approach the 1992 elections. With the Ruto at the helm of the YK92 and regard a brute and crude administrator. You find it in the Onasopokia and the Lungurene in that same period. You find it in the Nikoni at the, at the coast in the run up to 1997 elections. You find it in the Kiamba in the Rift Valley in the 2007-2008 violence. You find it in the Adel Muteshi's land in the North Rift in the same period. Violence, mayhem, invasion of farms, touching of homes, and burning of houses of worship are synonymous with Mr. Ruto. Yesterday, this Ruto regarded operation resurfaced in North Northlands, in Kisumu, Kibra, Madare, an industrial area, among other places. This attack of journalists, of journalists, local and foreign, has been a signature route of, of operation all his entire life in politics. Those who are there then will recall how in 1995, party goons and police beat up the late Dr. Richard Leakey and journalists, including Louis Tambridge of the Daily Telegraph, whose crime was to ask policemen why they were doing nothing when Dr. Leakey was being attacked. Let's make no mistake. Nobody must pretend to be safe. Anyone with any property in any part of the country has every reason to fear. Anyone with a sizable piece of land uh, business must be very afraid. We have every reason to believe that other properties will be invaded in the coming days. William Ruto himself owned vast tracts of land across the country, from Narok, Kajiado, Nairobi, and the coast. Mark that land was illegally acquired. Does his order for invasion of other people's lands amount for the invasion of his own? Time will tell. As we warned during the campaigns, Ruth has brought the class war here. He's keen to have a religious war here. This is how it starts. Once it starts, there's no end until citizens turn on one another. All along, we saw it coming. When we launched Azimir La Umoja in the city of Nakuru in August of 2021, we warned against pitting people against each other. We warned against the seeds of a class war that were being planted, pitting the poor against the rich, the young against the old, one faith against the other, tribe against tribe. We warned that the country needed to embrace a tradition of making compromises for the sake of the nation. We warned that leaders need to un unclench their fists and shaking hands for the sake of the nation and we call for the cleansing of the land of the spirit of anger and bitterness, the spirit of revenge and the entitlement and to continue on a path that reconciles, unites, calms, and stabilizes the nation. Above all, we warned that mere words and catchy slogans alone would not work. 
You told our people to study history and see where they had, it had led those countries that fell victims to the sweet tongues of politicians who were s selling snake oil to desperate populations. You also warned them of the theory of Mr. Goebbels during Adolf Hitler's period. An angry and a bitter duo of Ruto and Gachagua who served the will of the people have now taken the low road and are summoning the worst demons to drive our nation into a ditch. It is clear the class war that Ruto promised during the campaigns is being actualized. This is how collapse begins. It is unfortunate that Ruto is so scared of losing legitimate power that it will damage the, uh, the environment and the economy just to stay in office. But Ruto must make no mistake. I repeat, Ruto must make no mistake. This struggle will march on, stronger and mightier, with his every vile response until our demands are met. One, the cost of goods must come down. Two, service must be opened. Three, the reconstitution of IBC must be above board and consultative and bipartisan. And that reconstitution must also mean restructuring of the IBC. We have won against Ruto and his violence before. We shall win against Ruto and his violence again. End of statement. Leo Sisi Kama Azimio Tumehuzunishwa na Tukio la Jana na Juzi Kwanza wafasi wa Azimio Wengi wa meshikwa Kiholela na polisi Na kuwekwa kwenye seli Kwa hizia siku jumamosi Jumapili Ata kabla ya maandamano ya jumatatu ujafanyika Wakati hii kuna wengi ya watu wetu ambao tayari mpaka notisi yetu ofike kwa ofisi ya polisi ati kuna mashtaka ambayo inawangoja lakini azimio hajafanya makosa lolote kisheria sisi tulipeana notisi kwa polisi kulingana na sheria hata tulifanya zaidi ya yale ambayo ilikuwa inatakikana manake tuliandika barua kwa inspector general ya, ya, ya polisi tukaandika tena kwa mkurugenzi wa polisi wa hapa Nairobi na katika kuandika vile vile katika kituo cha polisi ya hapa Nairobi na vile vile kule ambayo maandamano yanafanyika kote nchi ya Kenya kwa hiyo sisi tumefuata sheria ambayo na vile vile katiba letu ambayo inakubali ya Kenya kufanya maandamano ya kiamani lakini paskari ndio wamekachifu seria bwana uh, komi siku ya uh, jumapili ametangaza hadharani kiholela ati maandamano ya siku ya jumatatu ni marufuku atukujua yeye anafuata anatumia sheria gani mtumishi wa, wa serikali ana uwezo ya kutangaza kiholela ati yeye amepiga marufuku ati yeye uwezo alipata wapi lakini baada ya kufanya hayo akaweka mahaskari kila mahali kuzuia sisi kuingia katikati ya mji na sisi tulisema tunataka kufanya maandamano katikati ya mji na tukasema tutatoka wapi mpaka wapi kulingana na mjibu wa kisheria Wakaziri jana sisi atuku kuja hata katikati ya mji tulienda kaongware na nataka kushukuru sana wakaji wa kaongware kwa kutukaribisha vile wanatukaribisha walionyesha ulimwengu mzima ya kwamba 
azimio ina wafuasi katika taifa letu kila mahali walitusindikiza askari wakaanza kupiga sisi kaanza kurusha ile eh, eh, vifaa vya gesi ya machozi baadaye ile gari yao ikaanza kurusha sisi maji ambaye ndio chafu ati sisi tutatoka ala tutakimbia lakini wakaji wakaangwari wakao mashujaa na wakabaki na sisi watusindikiza mpaka tukapita tunaelekea kibra tukazuliwa pande hii ya ngongoro tukaingia huko nyuma walikuwa wakuja kule lakini waliogopa mati kibra natoa shukrani tena sana sana kwa wakaji wetu wa kibra kwa ujasiri walionyesha na ukarimu kutukaribisha kule kwa shangwe na, na vigelegele watu walionyesha kwamba sisi watu wa amani atoku tusi mtu yote atoku lani mtu yote tu sisi tuliongea na wafasi wetu tukasinyesha kwamba tunaweza kufanya maandamano ya amani tulikuwa tunataka kuja na Robi West kisha tuvuke tuende pande ile mkuu kwa njenga tuingie pande ile ya mbakazi na kadhalika lakini tulizuiliwa lakini mambo bado hai bado tutaendelea kitu kingine ambayo ilifanyika ni majambazi kutolewa wengine kayole wengine nyeri na kuletwa wa kuvamia shamba la rais mstaafu bwana huru kinyata jamii ya kinyata akona kule wanadai ati hiyo shamba ni yao walikuwa wanasindikizwa na askari wanaka askari wenyewe walikuwa wamejitoka wamekwenda majivicha nguo za kiraia wanasindikiza wale majangili wakivamia shamba ya bwana kinyata wakaanza kukatakata miti kisha baadaye wakatakatia moto katika hiyo shamba uharibifu mkubwa ilikafanyika hapo na bwana gachagwa na bwana um, kama uchungwa kimani uchungwa na bwana ndizi nyoro tayari walikuwa wametangaza mapema watafanya hivyo ati wao ni watoto wa maumau watoto wa maumau watakwenda kunyakoa mashamba Sijui sheria iko wapi ambayo inaruhusu hata wewe mtoto au mjukuu au mtukuu wa maumau wewe kwenda kuvamia shamba ya mtu yote vile unavyotaka. Sheria inalinda mali ya kila mkenya. Tusipofuatia sheria hatutakuwa na taifa katika taifa letu. Sasa Inspector General ya Polisi anatoa matusi kusema kwamba hawakujua hawakujulishwa ati yale yatafanyika Isitoje kutoka pale wakatuma wale wengine mpaka kampuni huko uh, industrial area East Africa Spectra Limited atakwenda sasa kwenda kuadhibu Raila pinga ukule kwake wale watu maana hawana magas nyungu za gas waende wajisaidie huko waka tupa mawe wakavunja vyo kule wakafanya madhara kubwa huko lakini hela alikuwa hayuko huko ayote inafanyika kwa sababu ya amri ambayo ilitolewa na bwana Gachagwa na bwana na wale watu yake na vivaraka vyake amini najua na ushauri na bwana Ruto lakini hata wafanye hali yote sisi tunasema tutaendelea mbele wale wale vijana wengine ambao walienda wakachukua pesa kwa bwana Gachagwa walienda kibra na kuli wanataka kuleta vita e, ya ukabila na vita ya kidini wakaenda pale wakajaribu kuchoma e, msikiti baadaye wakaenda wakachoma e, wakachoma kanisa hiyo msikiti ilikuwa ichomwe ileta vita baina ya wanubi 
na Wakristo upande mwingine na wajaluo lakini ile kanisa ambayo walichoma ambayo ya PCA ni kuleta vita baina ya wajaluo na wakikuyu kwa hiyo ambao wanataka ni kuleta vita ya wenyewe kwa wenyewe ili watu wetu waande kupigana na wale vijana walikuwa wametumwa na hiyo kikundi hiyo hiyo bwana gachagwa juzi mimi timi tuli, mimi nilitoa habari tulijua tayari ati mpango ilikuwa mpangwa katika boma ya bwana gachagwa ati atakutakuwa na ambulance ambayo itakuwa saja beba wagonjwa au vipaya kutibu watu lakini mjenga mbebe maaskari pale walikuwa ni majambazi wamejivisha na nguo za askari kuja kufanya mahadhara na wewe uliona kwenye Roninga maaskari wakitoka kwenye ambulance tunajua hata manyumba pale yale njama yote yalikuwa yanapangwa ngine ni nyumba uh, 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 waziri wa ambaye uh, amestaafu na mwingine ni waziri ambaye kwa serikali wakati huu kwa hivyo sisi tunasema kama wanazimio tutazidi kufuata sheria tutazidi kudumisha amani lakini vile vile tunataka wale ambao wanajaribu kutuchochea wakome manake sisi hatutasimama mpaka tupate haki yetu tena vile tunataka kukashifu marafiki wetu wa Kenya wa kigeni nchi za kigeni wamekaa Kenya wengi wao wako kwenye kitanda na bwana Ruto na bwana Gachagua hawezi kuongea wanachimama hata wakinaona maovu yake yake yakifanyika ya, ya, ya katika taifa letu na hivyo kubwa sana tunapenda rafiki wetu wa nje rafiki wa Kenya wachukue msimamo katika mambo haya nisho sisi tunasema dai letu ni vitu vitatu kwanza tunasema tunataka gharama ya maisha yapunguzwe irudi chini kwa wananchi wa Kenya pili tumesema kwa sababu ya maneno ambayo yametokea baada ya muzi ya mahakama kuu juu ya uchaguzi wa urais wa mwaka jana nataka nyungu ili ya kuhifadhi matokeo ya uchaguzi yani sava kwa kimombo ya fungulie ili tufanye ukaguzi na watu wastani misho ile tume ya uchaguzi ambayo inasimamia uchaguzi watatu walichafu chebukadi na wenzake wale wanne ambao wamefutwa kazi ni bwana Ruto tunataka warejeshe kwa kazi yao alafu kuombwa kwa tume mpya tuwe tunashirikishwa kama wanazimio ndivyo sisi tunataka kuona kama tume ya uchaguzi imebadilishwa mara hii hatutaki tu ati ni halmshauri ya uchaguzi hapa Nairobi ati watu saba tunataka kila county iwe na timu yake ya uchaguzi ili sisiwe ya kwamba mambo inafanya hapa Nairobi na lingine natoka huko pembeni na inabadilishwa kabla haijatangazwa hiyo vile vile ni maneno ambayo tunasema nataka yafanyike kwa hiyo yale inaitwa kwa kimombo irreducible minimum demands ya jamii kwa hiyo mengi yote mengi namna hiyo nasema shukrani sana kwa nini kupiga siku ya leo asanteni sana kulipa gharama sitasimama maovu ya kitawala sitasimama maovu ya kitawala iko iko tayari kulipa gharama sitasimama maovu ya kitawala we'll be going from here first to, through kibra and after that we're going to the farm which was in, invaded yesterday mr kinyata okay thank you very much we go for meeting kibra leaders at uh, the place is called uh, uh, Gong Hills Gong Hills what is it